Welcome everyone, I'm Laura DeFranco, the CEO of Brave Healer Productions, where we have a mission to wake the world up to what's possible. And here today to help me with that mission are some of the most amazing author experts of a new book that we have coming out called The Energy Medicine Solution, Mind-Blowing Results for Living an Extraordinary Life. So before I introduce the authors to you today, let me just say a huge thank you to Jacqueline Kane, who is our lead author for this project. And Jacqueline, um, thank you for your big mission. Thank you for bringing together this amazing group of authors. And really, I know you wanted people to understand energy at a whole nother level. And I think we did it, girl. I think this is the most awesome book and I can't wait to share some of these topics with you guys today. So I have Beth Manning with me. She is a medical intuitive and master psychic healer who helps guide and, empi and empower clients to heal from mental, physical, and emotional challenges, including chronic pain and autoimmune conditions. Christine mm -hmm. Badalamenti-Smith is a yoga therapist, rewilding guide, environmental advocate and writer whose mission is to help people feel at home, alive and powerful in their bodies and in the natural world. I have Elizabeth Waugh Duford with me. She's a Reiki practitioner and crystal healer located in North Carolina. And Mandy Pullen Barr is a clarity catalyst coach who works with individuals during times of transition to help them get unstuck and clear on their life's purpose. Yeah, I got some powerful women in my Zoom room today. I can't wait, you guys. Beth, you're going to start the party off. Tell us about your amazing chapter. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for this opportunity. So my chapter is chapter 20, Ignite Your Inner Healer, Breathing to Release Buried Pain and Emotions. And this is really about my journey to understand just how powerful the human body is and that you can heal yourself. And it was really about learning how, you know, when I was a kid, I trapped so many emotions uh, after my dad died, um, you know, things that I didn't want to upset anyone or tell anyone how I was really feeling. And it caught up to me later with chronic pain and, you know, going to so many specialists and having them say, you know, nothing's wrong with you. You're, you're fine, but I wasn't fine. And, you know, eventually it was finding these holistic practitioners and learning how, to love myself, to be with myself, to use that inner power to, to trust what, what my intuition was saying and what it really needed. And at the same time, I was in massage school and what started out for me as a really Western medicine approach program of, you know, find the trigger points, learn the anatomy that also shifted into, wow, my client just really needs someone to listen and be present. They need to know how to breathe and I can hear what their body is saying, you know, I can help them in so many amazing ways and, and just cultivating more of that and letting these gifts open up. I kind of want to rewind you to this place um, that you were talking about. You guys, it's, it's important to not trap and hold emotions because mm -hmm. it can lead to physical illness. Will you talk about that just a tiny bit more, Beth? Oh, definitely. It's, it's like carrying these weights around with you all the time. You know, those things that I want to say no, but I just said yes, or, you know, I'm just, I've got to bite my tongue right now. And it, it gets stored inside of us and we, we don't know how to release these things. It's not our natural human instinct. So it, it really takes, you know, having, having someone teach us because often it's not our parents, you know, we have to learn these things mm -hmm. often later in life. And, and that's the amazing thing about this book is that there's so many people who can hold space for that kind of healing and give you that first step to, to help you do that on your own. Yes, definitely. I get very excited about that too. And we need all the ways. Um, not every one thing works for everyone and not every one thing works for the same person every time. So we do need the toolkit. Oh, I can't wait to give you guys this book and all of the different ways from all of these different amazing people. Um, Beth, thank you for being here. Christine, how about you? Tell us about your amazing chapter. Hi, everyone. Thank you. So my chapter is 25. It's yoga therapy, partner with your body to manage anxiety and more. 
And writing this chapter was really inspiring and helpful to me because it helped me process what brought me to this point. Coming to yoga therapy was a total change in my career. I was an environmental advocate, and then I developed severe anxiety in my early 30s, and I had to acquire this entirely new toolkit to manage my anxiety and come back to myself. And I did that through partnering with a therapist, but then also partnering with yoga and ultimately partnering with my body. And that's what was the main um, impetus for my healing and then for changing my career was understanding that there's this wealth of information and also power within me. And so many things have clouded our ability to access that information and power, whether it's trauma that we've experienced, it's relationships that we're in, it's our career, it's our family, it's society and all of our conditioning, we lose connection to self and it becomes really hard to be present. And so I discovered through learning all about yoga therapy that there's a way to tap into that and to become familiar with not just my physical body, but also my emotional body, my energetic body, which is what we're talking about today, um, my spiritual body. Not everyone sort of accepts that there is one, but I do. And then, of course, the mental body. And they all have to coordinate. They have to work together to be able to move through your life in a holistic and well-informed and powerful way. So I'm really excited to share my story in the first part of the chapter, and then to share a tool that anyone can use at home to engage in this kind of experience on their own. And I'm really excited that you can listen to that meditation if you get our book. And um, I think it's really powerful to listen to it versus reading it. And anyone can do this. It is for anyone. And I just it's super important to say you don't have to like yoga or even want to take a yoga class to do yoga therapy because it's therapy. It's not yoga. It's just based on the fundamental principle that the best way to get to your body, excuse me, the best way to get to your mind is through your body. Yeah, fully agree with you there. That body, that sacred vessel that you're walking around in every day has keys, magical keys. Mm to so many things that you want. <laughs> um, so I'm just curious, um, Christine, do you have a notebook on your yoga mat all the time? That's Lexi? a good question. <laughs> and I don't because I really want to be present. And so I let the ideas sort of come into my mind and come out of my mind. And then it's those ones that still kind of linger after the practice is over that I know are the really important ones to follow up on. And so I usually follow up afterward. That's cool. That's a good, uh, a good strategy. Thank you for being here. All right, Elizabeth, your turn. Tell us about your amazing chapter. So my chapter is chapter 17, and it is uh, soothing chronic gut, a crystal pathway to soothing chronic gut pain. Um, so basically, um, I tell the story of my healing journey and the first part of the chapter, um, which is somebody, I have a background in social work. And so I was working with you know, mostly really traumatized people um, for many years and noticing that there were these um, chronic health conditions that many of them had, um, even my young clients. But I wasn't really making that connection to like my own trauma and how it was turning up in my body. And I had um, chronic gut pain for over 10 years, um, went to many specialists, as others have mentioned, um, tried lots of medications, you know, dietary changes, the whole works, and wasn't finding any relief and was really feeling despair. Um, and I finally ended up at a clinic that explained to me the link between trauma and chronic gut problems. And it was like a light bulb went off in my head. Um, as some people know, there is a big connection between our brain and our gut. There's as many nerve endings in our gut as there are in our brains. And so um, basically my brain was telling my gut something was wrong. Um, and I also learned at that clinic that women who have experienced abuse are more likely to have chronic unexplained gut problems. So making all those connections, um, 
I first started doing meditation and mindfulness to help detach from the pain, but it wasn't making the pain go away. And so I explored Reiki and finally started having relief, um, which was this amazing shift. And it turned out, I learned from my Reiki teacher that, you know, I had all this trauma that was stored in my gut and I needed to release it energetically. Um, and I was able to enhance the release through adding crystals to my Reiki practice. And it just, again, was this transformative experience of energetic healing um, that I really wanted to share with other people um, because it was such a, it was just, it really saved my life um, in so many ways. And I am a different person because of it. And I just really want people to know that like, energy medicine is a real thing. I mean, I think we have so much skepticism in Western culture of these alternative practices, many of which are ancient. Um, and so, you know, crystals have been used for healing for thousands of years. Um, it's mentioned in all sorts of ancient texts, even the Bible. Um, and, you know, Reiki was developed in the very early uh, 20th century um, in Japan. It's again, a practice that has had many proven results for lots of people in shifting pain out of their bodies. Um, so I just, again, really wanted people to know that like healing is possible no matter what you've been going through. And even if doctors tell you that they don't know how to fix it, um, there are ways that you can feel better. And it's really about looking at the holistic body including, you know, mental, physical, spiritual, emotional, and energetic. Yes, I love that, Elizabeth. Thank you. This is such a great example of this, this way that I talk about how we're really helping people wake up to what's possible. When you have heard a conversation like this, you guys, and you're like, oh, trauma, gut pain. Oh my gosh, I've had gut pain for so long. And then these light bulbs are gonna go off and you're gonna realize there's probably a place that you haven't explored yet. That could be mm -hmm. a key or a link to feeling better. And I get very excited um, as you guys talk about these connections and these aha moments you had and all of the things that our listeners can, you know, um, think about in terms of where they've been and what they need to do. Um, Elizabeth, thank you for being here. Thank you. So Mandy, are you ready to tell us about your chapter? I am. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for having us. My name is Mandy Pullen Barr, and my chapter is 23 Journaling healing your inner critic with kindness and compassion. So let's see, for me, I, gosh, I, since I can remember, um, I would sabotage like almost anything that came in my way, a healthy relationship, sabotage it, you know, being healthy, exercise, sabotage would by overeating. And it wasn't really until I started doing work um, as a coach that I learned that I created these sub personas within myself to what started off as protecting me from um, doing things that were embarrassing. And this started off when I was a little girl and I was, you know, I thought that I was just the cat's meow, ready to get in the pool, go and swimming. And um, it was that day that somebody called me fat and I hadn't even, I didn't know what that meant, what, you know, it just, but I knew that it was negative and I knew that it, it, it hurt me. And from that moment on, I just, I did my light. I made myself smaller and, you know, many things happened along my little life that like kept giving me proof that I wasn't good enough, right? Because I was fat or I was this. And when I started doing this work as a coach and I learned that I had these um, inner critics in me telling me these things, that I could override it with my voice of wisdom, this beautiful angelic persona that is really the essence of me, the core of who I am. And I was able to get to that through following a, um, a journaling system and rather than like looking at my critic as being bad, looking at it from a, you know, from my voice of wisdom perspective and um, really having compassion and kindness for this critic and understanding that this came from a place of, you know, this little girl who was hurt inside. 
And, you know, when I was able to heal that, you know, I've been able to heal my relationship with food and heal my relationship um, in, with intimacy. And um, yeah, really, it has given me a whole new lease on life. And one place affects all the other places, right? So it's the work that you do in an area is usually going to affect all the other areas. And hopefully people will be surprised if they just dive in. Was it um, hard for you to do that at first? I think it was very hard. hard. Yeah. I mean, when I was um, and actually even while I was, you know, in the throes of writing this chapter, it was an emotional time for me you know, reliving it all and, you know, but really wanting to make sure that I covered all the steps that I went through and the process that I went through to help our, our readers be able to have that transformation and be able to get clear on, you know what, that these feelings aren't facts. This is going to pass and, um, and having the tools to be able to do that. Yeah. Awesome. And thank you for that. And thanks to all of you. Thanks, not just for saying yes to this project, but you know, you all really shared vulnerable, amazing stories. It's going to help our, our readers really see themselves in your stories, but you allowed us to get to know you. And I thank you for that. And next you all are going to have these master teachings in the chapter as well. You know, the mission was to help you have some practical experiences so that you could try out all of these different kinds of energy medicine modalities that we're offering. And you all did that so brilliantly. And it's one thing because you teach all day long, you teach your clients, you, um, you know, coach them and help them to do what they're doing. But it's quite another challenge to put that in black and white in the book in a way that the reader can have that same, you know, same takeaway. And you all did it so brilliantly. So I thank you for that. Um, okay, so Christine, I'm gonna start with you for this next question. And this is really sort of, uh, you know, the, the meat of it. Everything is energy, right? We're, I think we're all very excited to talk about this powerful topic because we know what's possible with this. But um, Christine, what's, what's one, I know there's a million, but what's one important thing you want our listeners to understand about what energy can do in terms of transforming their life? Ooh, what energy can you do in terms of transforming your life? Uh, how can I ask you for just one, right? It's so unfair. <laughs> yeah, well, I think the most important thing to me to convey to readers is that it's accessible and you don't need anything more, at least from a yoga therapy standpoint, you don't need anything more than your body and your breath and your presence and a little bit of willingness to kind of go into those discomfort and uncomfortable moments and just be with them, right? I heard somebody else say that they use mindfulness and meditation to sort of avoid what they were feeling. And that is in fact, the absolute opposite of what we're doing. We're going into it and we're exploring it with curiosity. And so um, you just need to come and be a little bit open and all you need is you. Yes. And I love that you said accessible. Of course it is right? You don't need anything in particular, just anything specific. I love that. Thank you. That's so perfect. Great way to kick that question off. Elizabeth, how about you? Um, what's one thing you want our listeners to understand about energy and what it can do for them? Well, as a Reiki practitioner, one of the things that I learned was that I'm basically a channel for what I consider to be divine energy connecting with my own energy. And any of us can be that channel. You just have to be open to it. You don't need special training. You don't need special tools necessarily. You just need like the willingness to accept that your energetic body and the larger universe are always connected and that we can draw healing from that universe that loves us so much. That's interesting that you both said willingness. And I'm glad you both said that because I hope you listeners heard that twice, <laughs> you know, like, yeah, you, you have to open your mind and be willing to at least explore, 
you know, and then all of a sudden these little magical miracles happen and you open your mind wider at that point, right? It gets exciting. It really gets exciting. Um, okay, Mandy, how do you want to answer this one? What's one thing you want people to know about this? Yeah, I mean, I, I believe that I am also um, a Reiki practitioner and I um, believe that we have the remarkable gift to heal ourselves to heal our heart, to heal our mind, to heal our, heal our spirit, our soul. And, you know, all it matters is like just taking that moment, finding your heart center, you know, finding your breath and being able to just connect with your breath and be curious. You said, you said curious when you answered the question, um, Christine, and it's, you know, that's one of the things that we share in our, um, our, coaching is, you know, rather than looking at this with judgment, let's look at this with curiosity, you know, and, and how can we, how can we heal ourselves? Because when we heal ourselves and are able to show up, then, you know, what a gift to those in our life. Definitely. Curiosity is so big here too. That's, uh, um, that can solve a lot of problems, a <laughs> switch from mm -hmm. judgment to curiosity and your yeah. whole world opens up to you, like literally. Um, okay, Beth, how about you? What do you want to tell people about this? I think there's so many people out there right now who have a diagnosis that doesn't feel right, or they don't even have a diagnosis, but they don't feel good. And it's understanding that like, you are not broken, you know, that there is another way. And that just starting to be open to feeling your own energy, starting to, to provide some space in your life for those intuitive pings to start to come in, that really there's so much powerful healing that you innately harness within you, but it is, it's about being open and willing and curious to the process. Yeah, nice. Um, I love it. All right, you guys. So this next question is something that I think it's really important to help people with. You know, if, if you're highly empathic or a highly sensitive person, you may have this issue of feeling literally everything and not being able to discern what's yours or not yours. And that can be extremely overwhelming. And I'm wondering, um, Elizabeth, have you experienced that? Is that you? And if so, um, what do you want to share with the listeners about that? Yeah, that's a great question and really resonant with me because I am a highly empathic person. When I was little, I remember literally feeling like a sponge, like I was absorbing everyone else's mood and everybody else's words. And, um, you know, and it's something I've really had to be mindful of as a practitioner that when I am being a channel for energy, that while it is an energy exchange, that I also need to um, protect myself from absorbing too much of anybody else's energy, especially when people are in pain, um, because I've found that I've literally taken on physical pain from people before. And so um, a lot of it has been about figuring out where my healthy boundaries are, um, how I can be loving and available and open to my clients while not taking in everything that they're releasing. Um, is an intentional practice for me. And I do actually quite a bit of journaling after I work with people in order to kind of work through some of what um, has come out during the session. Um, and I also try to spend as much time as possible going outside because I feel like that's where I feel the divine most and it's where I can kind of shed anything that's clinging to me, like the fresh air just carries it away. So I think figuring out what we need to do for self-care um, is huge and like making the time for it. Like don't see clients right in a row, you know, give yourself breaks in between, um, take days off sometimes, like just really protect your time because it's precious. And um, we can, as givers, we wanna help everyone, but you know, we need to help ourselves as well. Yeah, perfect. I love that. Um, I love the way that you explain that. It's so important. Um, I think that most healers I know are all highly sensitive people. That's our superpower. <laughs> and so if you guys are in that and nodding your head, we get a lot of head nods today here. Um, <laughs> I know you get it. Mandy, how about you in terms of this? Um, uh, are you that person also? What do you want people to know about this? 
I um I literally have Palo Santo and sage in like every room in my house along with like you know crystals and selenite and you know this is and that so well so maybe um, talk about why those things what do those things do for you um well I am by no means the expert on that but I will share my my personal experiences that you know I use selenite to help keep my other crystals happy and buzzing and then I have um, crystals that I use to help protect me, um, you know, from taking on other people's energy. Because in addition to being a, um, a coach, I work with people that are going through a divorce. And um, so I hear a lot of stuff. So I sometimes will hold on to my, um, my grounding stones to kind of help absorb that energy. And then I make sure I take care of my crystals and get them nice and clear for, you know, the next time that I, that I need them. But uh, yeah, no, with, it is very clear the Mandy that shows up after work who hasn't done what she should do to keep herself um, clear. And the, the Mandy that takes everything on at the end of the day. I mean, it is dramatically different. And, you know, my husband will say, you know, like, oh, you didn't, you know, you didn't clear yourself or you didn't protect yourself. And, it's, it is, it's really, it's really important because it's, um, and people will say, it, even people that are not, you know, in this space will say, oh, that person's energy, like got on me, you know, and it, cause it's a real thing. They just don't know how to explain it, I guess. And it's important because how you show up in the world with every other creature that you come into contact with. Um, you're, you are then radiating that particular kind of energy. You're showing up like that with other people. So um, I think what I love the most about you all is you take responsibility for this. Like mm. you, th you think about it, you talk about it, you use tools to help you clean and clear your own energy so that you can show up for your loved ones and your family and your clients with uh, that, I don't know, cleaner slate, you know, that higher vibe um, mm. that is healing. And I love that. I, I'm seriously so grateful. I get to play in the sandbox with you guys all day long. Um, Beth, how about you on this one? Um, are, is this you also? I think everybody nodded earlier. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want to talk about in terms of this? Oh, yes. I've definitely been feeling everybody's body sensations and pains and stress since I was really young. So um, I even teach a class on this to help people learn how to protect their energy and how to feel what their unique energy is and when they're taking on someone else's. Because um, it's just such a big part of, I think, just being human, even if you don't believe in energy, you know, understanding how to just do some basic clearing, grounding, um, you know, even like when we're trying to fix other people or change someone's behavior, it's so easy to pick up on their energy or when we're people watching, like just little things that we, how, if we can shift our behaviors, we can learn how to not pick up everybody else's energy or, you know, when we are feeling someone else's energy, some, some easy tools like grounding crystals, things like that to come back to ourselves and to our own energy. Yeah. Nice. You're, I'm having this vision of, you know, being in um, a grocery store, someplace where, you know, you've picked up on somebody yelling at a clerk and all of a sudden that energy is everywhere. And you're like, oh no, you know, but even some deep breaths and imagining the bubble around you, like there, there's some really easy, simple things, you know, you have that and those little energies can just ping off you and you can keep yourself grounded and centered and calm and joyful, even in the moments where it can get a little crazy or ugly. Um, okay, Christine, it's hard to go last on these questions, I know, but um, what do you want people to know about this? You know, there, I think for me, it was discerning what was mine and what wasn't mine. And just that practice of discernment was important for me. What, what's it been for you? Yeah, so you you really hit the nail on the head with that discernment. Um, yoga therapy teaches you to understand what's true in this moment, what's true within, what's yours, what's at the core of who you are, and to differentiate between narratives and stories and energies that don't belong to you, 
and what's real in the moment. And so um, that is a really excellent tool to be able to just check in with yourself and take a few breaths. Um, I, I used to be the person who took on a lot of energy and I felt like a victim to that when I was growing up and I developed this Mm -hmm. like hard exterior to try and repel and then a soft interior because I was so like, oh my gosh, this keeps happening to me. And what I discovered through learning about yoga therapy, creating healthy boundaries and tapping into my own resilience is that I can do the reverse so that my energy is a really powerful source in the space and it's radiating out. And what can happen is what's within me is really strong at the core. And then my my exterior can be permeable so that I can understand people and I can feel their energies, but I don't have to make it mine because I am giving my energy out to other people. So kind of flipping that script really helped me. And then you know, somebody said nature, sunshine, moonlight, fresh air, water. Yeah. <laughs> I love all of those. I love petting my dog as one of them. <laughs> yes. Um, okay. So we touched on it a little bit and I'm going to um, use this last question for all of you to kind of now we talked, you know, about personal energy, about internal energy, those energies that we're feeling inside of us. I want to talk about our external spaces. We touched on it with um, when Mandy talked about, you know, crystals, Palo Santo, like some of the tools she uses, we um, can create and shift energy in our external spaces. It affects us physically, mentally, um, in all of the ways. So Mandy, you're up first on this one. What's you touched on a couple, but what's maybe your favorite way of creating that energy in the space that you live in yeah. or maybe even work in? Yeah, it, it's very funny. My husband will say to me, he's like, you moved things around again. Yes, <laughs> yes. I did. Yes, I did. We needed a reset. He's like, how often do we reset the home? I'm like, often. <laughs> so I'll just, you know, whether it be like doing a, you know, a, sounds tedious but like a deep clean but like moving the the furniture around and just kind of like shaking it up um is something that I do to reset my um but also like you know the art that I have on the walls because the room how I decorate a room is how I feel when I get in it and um so sometimes I will be like you know what I'm not liking how I'm showing up for work I want to create a more Uh, professional space, or I feel like the space is, you know, too sterile. I want to have a little bit more personality. So just trying to find that right balance. Um, But yeah, no, definitely um, trying to keep the energy like fresh and and flowing is, is always my, you know, my first thing. Anyone else guilty of furniture rearranging and every so often? Yeah. <laughs> the moving things like, okay, yeah. I totally get that. And I love the feel of the fresh energy when, when I do that, I really do. Um, it can change everything. It's so when I walk into a room and I can take a deeper breath, I know something's going right in there. Yeah. And so I'm always after that feel. Um, how about you, Beth? What's your favorite way to manage the external space? Base energy. Well, I just started getting into feng shui actually with Pat, who's an author in the book. Um, so it's changed many things around in my house. And, and my husband is like, what? Wait, <laughs> I'm like, hang on, let's just wait and see how this works out. And, uh, and it's been amazing, the shifts. And um, I would say also like, so I work a lot with the shamanic energy and earth energy. So plants and having open windows and you know, just as many nature scenes and things like that as I can um, also helps me to really ground and, and relax and, you know, even, you know, come back to myself at the end of the day too. Yeah. A lot of you talked about nature. So when you bring nature into your spaces, then of course you have that lovely benefit of feeling that every day. I, um, I've done the same. I, I name all my plants. So I talk to them and, um, you know, they have names and they have particular places in my rooms and that's kind of fun. 
Um, and what's up with the husbands? Come on, husbands. Like we're going to get you on board with this because you know, you know how we're going to get them on board. Um, shifting your energy and your space can attract abundance. Mm -hmm. It can attract money. It can attract amazing relationships. It can, you can make your space magnetize everything that you want in your life. Right. Um, that's why I think I get excited about the feng shui and the energy and all of that. Um, Christine, how about you? What's one of your favorite ways to do this? Yeah, well, one of my favorite ways was taken, which is plants bringing in life however we can. Um, so besides that, and my house is so full of green, so is my office. I would say keeping things orderly, keeping it tidy. You know, I, I learned that we evolved in many different spaces as a human species. And so sometimes we feel safe to be able to see far and wide. And sometimes we feel safe to be able to sort of curl up and be ensconced. And so I have places in my house where I can see everything and it's like fresh and bright. And I have spaces in my house where I can just curl up and feel really safe and cozy. And so having those different kinds of spaces works for me. I love that you're talking about that. And you also mentioned briefly, even the color. So you said, I have a lot of green in general, right? In one room or different color, because the colors are energy as well. Mm -hmm. So it's so much fun. You, you can look into all of our little zoom rectangles today and see different colors, right? And different colors have different feels, different energy, different vibration, and they all can be connected to even like we're talking chakras and oh my gosh, we, we're going down the rabbit hole on this one. I, I love this topic so much. Um, okay, Elizabeth, you're actually going to close us out today on this one. What's one of your favorite ways? Well, obviously as a crystal healer, I have many, many, many crystals. You can see a few behind me on the shelf. Um, I have specific crystals in specific rooms for specific reasons. And for example, I keep rose quartz in our living room because it amplifies family har harmony, or I keep, um, you know, jade and citrine near my desk because they bring luck and abundance. Um, so I really try to be thoughtful about where I'm placing crystals in my house. And I am in love with the shape of the sphere. Um, so I have spheres in particular and like circular mirrors and lots of things shaped like circles throughout my house, because to me, that's the cycle of life. That's the shape of the earth. That's the shape of our cells. It's how everything is connected is through that 360 degrees, which is part of why my business is called Love 360. Um, so I just really like having that shape around me and uh, it makes me feel just like I have flow. I love that. That's another brilliant way to talk about this is the shapes in your furniture, in your, you know, decorating objects and everything. And the crystals, of course, we've talked about so many times today already. I hope you listeners are getting excited <laughs> about what's possible for your energy. Um, authors, thank you so much for what you do in the world and for being here today to share it with everyone. Thanks, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. So you guys, I know that something that one of our authors said today, maybe gave you the goosebumps, maybe made you curious. We talked about curiosity a lot today. Maybe you just need an, some extra support. You know, these projects are way more than books. They are a community. And these authors are very generously here for you to take the next step and answer the question and continue the conversation that we started today. So come on down into the show notes. I have them all hooked up with their websites there and you'll be able to click and have a little exploration and check out all of the awesome things that they are up to in the world. It's a lot. So you're also invited, of course, to our live book launch party. We're going to have that on November 18th at 10 a.m. Eastern. And the invitation with the Zoom link will be on the Brave Healer Productions Facebook page. So I have that linked up down below for you as well. If you're listening to this interview anytime around that November timeframe, a little later, November 18-ish, that means our book is ready and you can go to Amazon and buy your copy. Um, and lastly today, everybody, remember, your words change the world when you're brave enough to share them. So it's time to be brave. Uh -huh.
See you next time, everyone.